Hello, this is Odette. Um, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to show you how to make a necklace um, using the Makumegane technique. So I made this necklace, and here you can see is the Makumegane, and I used the metal leaf foiled, and then I made a cane in the metal. I was trying to um, make something similar like a coral cane so I made this and that's what we're going to do today and you are going to need um, Primo uh, white translucent Primo and I already made a log and I conditioned white Primo on a number three uh, number zero is my thickest setting so we're going to wrap this around the log and then I'm just gonna And just wrap it around and then you're gonna bring the the white clay and then you're gonna place it right there and then bring it back and then it's gonna leave you a line and that's gonna be your guide to cut it all right so I'm just close this and then are we going to reduce this? I'm trying to um, get rid of some um, those air bubbles in there. Now you're gonna put it on the tile and roll it. trying to roll this evenly but sometimes it's it's I found it like kind of hard sometimes to um, like this part is already skinnier than this one and I'm trying to find how to make it even as I go because this part is already thinner than this one But it's okay, not a big deal. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so we're gonna cut this end. Just reduce the side a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to cut um, let's see about an inch maybe about an inch and a half they don't have to be perfect size I mean they have to be equal size but maybe about an inch uh, an inch and a half
Okay, that's enough. So now what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna make like a petal, petal shape. I'm just gonna push it down here, turn it around. And it's gonna look like this. And you're gonna do the other ones. All right, and then gonna put them all together side by side. Okay, so now we're gonna squeeze this in and try to make this, um, keep this shape Try to keep this in while we squeeze it in. Trying to maintain the shape. And then you squeeze. What I'm trying to make it a, a triangle shape. And just push it in. Just trying to reduce this. Not reduce it, just make it longer. Okay, so now we're going to cut the ends. And... We are going to cut this in three equal pieces. So, let's see. So it would be two centimeters. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so now we're going to put them all together. Like this. It's going to be like that and make sure they are stuck together let me check the top and bottom now we're going to cut this in the middle and just push down on the tile so it makes it easier to cut Okay, now we're going to cut this in the middle. And it's going to look like that. Okay, now I'm going to make um, a snake so I can make a core to go in the middle. I don't have to be that big. Okay, so you're going to put it here in the middle. Now you're going to join them together. Now we're going to reduce this, so just squeeze it in. And we're going to go like this. And then pick it up. And then you're going to grab it like this and then rotate it. Thing. Just keep pinching, rotating. this and this is what we have so this is going to be um what, what I'm going to put in the middle and I'm gonna let this rest because 
I'm going to be cutting right thin slices and it's best if you let it um, rest for a while because it will just distort it will get distorted and you need a really sharp um, blade for this and if I try to I'm gonna let it rest and um, I'll reduce it some more but this is what's going to be in the middle of the cane. That's what I use here. So I'm going to let this rest. Um, and I'll be back for the next step, which will be how to make um, the makumegane with the silver uh, metal leaf. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so now we're going to make the bakumigani. And I already um, placed the silver um, foiled, I'm sorry, the metal leaf, which is the speedball metal leaf. Then the colors that I'm using are the white, um, translucent primo this is um, white pearl peacock I'm sorry turquoise this is turquoise this is the peacock and this is the ultramarine so the ultramarine and the peacock are the ones that have the silver leaf the metal leaf metal leaf now I'm gonna stack this so I'm gonna um, stack this it's going to be the turquoise, then this is the ultramarine, and then we're going to just face it down against the turquoise. Um, then there's the peacock. And then for the translucent, I'm going to apply this Pearl X mica powder, a spring green 685. I'm going to just apply it. And then you're going to need a brush. And then just apply a little bit. And use your fingers. It would be faster, I guess. Okay. Make sure you close the lid. in the middle so we got the turquoise on the bottom ultramarine then the peacock now we're gonna put the translucent and then the white pearl on top and then we're gonna grab our roller and we're gonna flat flat this out And then I'm going to cut it in the middle. And then stack it. And 
and you can see there's there um, the layers are forming and then we're gonna flatten this out again stretch it out and then we're going to um, cut it in half again can see all the layers that are forming. Alright, stretch it out. And then we, I'm going to cut the edges. Just trim this. And then you keep this. Now I'm going to give it, um, I'm going to put some holes in here. I'm using this, um, like a burnisher tool. I don't know what it's called, but um, I'm just going to poke some holes in there. I use this one so I'm just what you're gonna do is just go in and then just poke some holes in there and then with your tissue blade and then just cut in there And then we're going to fill the holes um, with this um, scrap clay we had. And you're just going to grab a little bit and then start filling the holes. You make sure you do that. Yeah, you're going to make sure you fill this in because once you start cutting the layers, there's going to be um, the holes in there. Um, so that's why you got to fill this. I mean, you can do all sorts of stuff with this Makumegane. You can use stamps. Um, but you gotta make sure there's um, there's many layers in there so you can't um, it has to make sure it goes all the way deep in there. Because if you use a stamp and then this is really thick and then you'll only put it on the top, you're not gonna be able to see you only be able to see the the stamp on the top. 
Now we're going to do the same thing on the back. Same thing we did. And then just cut. Do the same thing, fill the holes. Make sure there's in there. I really like, like I said, that all my the techniques, like polymer clay ones, I think the Makumegani is one of my favorite ones because there's so much stuff that you can do. And then it's always different things that um, you can come up with. Um, and you don't have to use the silver leaf, but it makes it like really pretty and shiny. But I can say, yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. And it's just really easy to do. Just, just come up with some colors and just stack them together. And that's it. You just have to make sure you stack them and um, so you get many layers in there. Okay, so I gotta make sure that's in there. Okay, so now we're going to make sure put this aside. Now we're gonna squeeze this in there so they're like in there. So everything that we cut it stays in there. Flatten this out. Does this have to be? I'm gonna squeeze that like this so we get all the um, so we can come up with the makumegane. And then we just flatten it out. And make sure you keep this scraps because we're going to use it later. Okay, so now we're going to start shaving this. Um, cut the slices. And you're going to need a very, very sharp blade. I'm going to clean this. Make sure this is um, stuck to the tile. Then we can start cutting this. All right, just grab your blade and then start slicing this. And then just keep doing that. And you can see the, the layers in there. And I'm going to continue doing 
doing this and then I'll be back when I'm done see you in a little bit okay so I cut all the slices now we're going to put them together make a veneer and just start putting them on top of each other randomly it doesn't have to be any specific pattern start stacking them And just keep doing this. This takes a while to do it, but it's just it's just really nice when you do a makeup on it because you always gonna get different things. I mean, depending on what color you use. For this, I was trying to make um, like a beach theme, like the ocean in one side and then the other side, in the middle. When I make the other, the cane, I was trying to um, make like a coral cane or like a jellyfish, the stuff that are floating in the water. And then on the other side will be like the beach. So I was trying to do that. I really love blue colors. Blue is one of my favorite colors. Oh, we're almost done. This here. Okay, now we're gonna grab our roller and then we're gonna flatten this out a little bit. This is gonna be stuck to the tile. And then we're gonna flat, flat this out in different directions. What I do is I just Find it out with the roller for a little bit and then I'll just pick it up because this is going to be 
probably is going to be stuck there. pick it up and see. And I don't want this to rip. And then just go with the blade. And it's not a big deal if it rips. You can just put it back together. But I'm going to keep finding it out a little bit more. some areas that have some gap like gaps and you can go ahead and just if you have any leftovers you can just fill it up fill it with clay Let's see right here and we're gonna put a um, um, sheet of clay underneath And then I conditioned some scrap clay I had. And I'm just going to use this. I rolled this out on a number four. So my thicker setting is a number zero, so it's, it's quite thin. Well, it's not going to be um, wide enough. Let me roll it out again. Let's see, because I want to use all of this. Um, I don't want to have to mix a little bit more. Okay, so now I roll this out. And then we're going to place our makumegani on top of this. Grab a roller. Flatten it out a little bit. I'm going to roll this through the pasta machine. Oh no, my second thicker setting, which is a number one. Well, this is quite, quite thick. Oh, it's cutting this. Um, Make sure I got all this clay on my hand. I'm gonna pick this up. It's quite. <clears throat> it's like usually like in the summertime, everything just gets really warm. The clay gets warm, and everything sticks. Um. So you can see here's a veneer. 
it looks really really pretty then I'm gonna roll this out um, on my pasta machine let me clean my tile because this make sure this is clean like make sure you clean your um, blades too because if you don't and it's, it has all this clay it makes it hard to cut but yeah I'm gonna roll this out that's the machine I don't number number one That's all we're gonna do now for now with this. Okay. And then keep all the scrap clay so you can use it later for the backing, which I'm gonna do that. Okay, so now I'm going to put this aside. Okay, for the other side of the pendant, I'm going to use I'm going to use um, gray granite and then I'm going to mix this with oh, let's see. so this is a gray color I'm going to just put a little bit of ecru, ecru um, to make give it a li little bit of a yellowish let me make sure I clean this in my roller too. Okay, so I'm going to, yeah, like I said, I'm going to give it a little bit um, like a yellowish tint. So let's see, we're going to cut this. And then I'm going to condition this. Got all this blue clay on my hand. Um, so what I'm going to do... So this pasta machine, when you don't, when you get all this blue stuff and it just transfers to the other clays. And that's not good because I'm not trying to have blue in here. But I'm just going to grab a little bit of this ecru. And then I'm just going to start with a little bit. Then I'm just going to condition it with my hands and then just and just try and mix it really well can add more of this um, granite and then you can roll it in the pasta machine
and you see that it's changing the color just a little bit so that it's not as gray you can see the difference but if you want to add more you can't until you're satisfied with with the color but you don't want to do it too much So that's pretty good. All right, so now we have um, the Makumigane and the gray granite clay, and we're gonna cut from each. And I'm using this cutter from Jessima Designs. This is, I think this one's the dagger one. All right, so I'm gonna cut this. Let me just smooth it out a little bit. I'm going to smooth this one too. Push down, lift this up, I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to pick this up. Clean the tiled. You don't want to have that stuff. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this in the middle. Just put this on the top. Grab your flexible blade. This is what's going to look like. No, I know I rolled out some scrap clay. Set this aside and then just cut this. Places. Hold on a second, make sure this is straight. I'm just going to place them together. Right. 
Now we're gonna grab the uh, printing paper and then make sure this is, they're both connecting. And just do it in the middle. So now I'm going to, I have the cane that I made earlier and I'm going to cut some slices and then I'm going to put it in the middle. And you try to cut it as thin as possible. Now you're going to grab the pieces and um, place them in the middle. Alright, so we're going to place the slices in the middle. Starting on the top. Just trying to make it flat when you tr before you put it in here, and then just l leave a little bit of space in between. Okay, now grab your um, printing paper and we're going to smooth this out. Just make sure, press them down.
just grab the cutter again and just cut it because it got um, it expanded because I was um, bur burnishing it out with the paper so now I'm gonna have to cut it this up and I'm gonna bake this for 30 minutes at 275 primo recommended temperature and I will cover this with the bowl and I'm gonna do the other one off camera it's the same thing and I'll be back when um, this is out of the oven to do the backing Alright, so our pendants are uh, out of the oven. Now I'm gonna put it back in, in, the, in the back. So um, I already conditioned the scrap clay that I had on a number three on my pasta machine. And I'm gonna give it texture with the sponge. Just grab the roller, go up and down. And then just pick it up. <clears throat> and then flip it around and I'm using this polymer clay liquid clay and we're just going to use a little bit you don't need that much Just cut it. I'm gonna pick it up. Now we're just going to trim the, the edges. I just removed some of it right here. And then put the blade um, just go <clears throat> all the way around it. Make sure you don't leave any gaps between the raw clay and the baked clay. And then just um, grab your sponge and then. Um, like I said, just make sure there's no gaps and then just texture it on the side. And just make sure I've got to fix this area right here.
And that's it. I'm gonna do the other one. Just do the same thing. Just a little bit of liquid clay. Pick it up, I'm going to do the same thing, just removing the excess. Um, the edges with your blade. And then just go around it. Make sure there's no gaps and just grab your sponge and if you need to do it um, texture it again you can do that it on the tile and then just put the sponge texture it and then you can texture the sides as well like like this and like on my other videos I've been gluing the bell in the back I'm doing the same thing here but if you want you can do um, you can insert a belt in here, like you can open a pocket and put a belt in there if you want. It just depends um, what you preferred. I just want to glue a belt um, this time. You can also make a bell with clay. I haven't done that yet. All right, so when you're done, it should look like this. And I'm going to bake both pendants for an hour. And again, you're gonna put a, a piece of printing paper and then your clay your uh, necklaces and then you're gonna cover it with the bowl and bake it at 275 recommended temperature for primo you gotta read if it's primo it's 275 depending on what clay you're, you're using um, you gotta follow that um, the recommended temperature but Primo is 275. So, um, yeah, I'll bake this and I'll come back to do the show you how to um, sand this. See you in a little bit. Hey guys, so I have the two pendants, they're out of the oven, and I'm getting ready to sand this. What you're gonna need is um, a bowl with water and sandpaper. Um, I start with 400 grid all the way to 3,000 and you can find this on, um, in Amazon, any hardware store, Walmart. So I dip this in the water. I usually do this in the sink in my kitchen because it just gets really, really messy. But I'm going to do it here. 
I'm going to get a little bit of paper towel so I can place this here. And then I'm going to start with this one. And then I just grab this and then I start sanding, do a circle motion. I really, I don't like sanding, sanding this, it just hurts my hands, I don't really like doing this, this part, but I mean you can see the difference when you're done, it's like really soft. And then I dip it in the water and bring it back here. And then I do the sides. If you texture your, your the sides of the of a necklace you're doing, I don't you don't want to sand it. That's like, I texture the back, I won't touch that. But I know how to sand this area because um, it was not, it was kind of rough there, but. And that's what you need to do. And you keep sanding and then go all the way up to 3000. It just makes a big difference. Um, when you do this so I'm going to continue doing this and I'll be back because this is going to take me a while because I'm going to sand the other one too and when I'll be uh, when I come back I'm going to show you how to do the um, the resin okay, see you in a little bit hey so now it's time for resin our pieces and I'm going to use this Ultra Dome UV Epoxy. This is a one part resin and you're going to need um, a UV light. And I have a toothpick just to drag the resin around. And you're going to need a um, silicone mat. Okay, so... What I do is I always start pouring um, from the edges all the way in the middle. And you need to pour just a little bit when you're starting because if you start pouring too much and then it starts overflowing everywhere. So what I do is I just pour just a little bit initially. And then just work your, your way inside in the middle. And then with the toothpick, you start dragging it towards the edges. And you can also use other types of resin, the one that is the two-part resin, but for that one you have to wait a couple of days. And then that one you have to mix. And then just drag it.
I'm going to do the same with the other one. And you want to leave this under the UV light for at least 15 minutes. And then I'll be back to show you final product and then I'm well after this I'm going to glue the bell but then when I glue the bell I have to wait for that to dry and then I'll just um, do the the cord and that will be it so I'll show you I'll be back to show you when I'm done hey guys so here's our both pendants so I'll finish with the resin, and you can see it. It's really shiny. It came out really nice. To give you a close up. And I glue a, ba a bail in the back on both pendants. And this is the back gold texture. And for the cord, I use a fox suede cord. This is the uh, color gray. And then for this part right here, I use, um, this is a cord end on each side, and then we have two jump rings. And then you're gonna need a plier. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna put, it, put the cord in there and then close it out with the plier really, really tight in there. And it's gonna look like that. And then you're gonna Put the jump ring here, and then this is a, a barrel clasp, and this is the one that you twist to open. And then you close it out like that, twist it again. So this is it. So I hope you like this tutorial. Um, I hope this was um, helpful for you in any way. Um, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe so I can make more videos. Um, if you have any questions, um, any comments, write it in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.